Hey guys, I'm Nicole. In today's video, I'm sharing with you three powerful strategies that will help you to vividly describe emotions, whether you're working on a short story or a novel or a nonfiction piece like a memoir essay or a blog post where you want to describe your own emotions in a way that the reader will experience them as well. So you've probably heard the writing rule, show don't tell before, and that's really important to keep in mind when it comes to writing about emotions because you don't want to just tell your readers what is happening in the story. So you don't want to just tell them that he was angry or he was sad or he was exhausted when you're writing about a character because those words keep your reader at arm's length and don't allow them to fully become immersed in the story and fully experience what your characters are feeling. And when we write, we're trying to connect with our readers on a deeper level and touch their hearts with our words. So these strategies that I have for you today are going to help you do that when it comes to writing about emotions. The first strategy is to describe what is happening in the scene, so what you can observe. And this is basically mimicking real life where you wouldn't have a narrator come out in front of you and say, this person here is angry, but you would have to come to that conclusion yourself by that person's words or the actions that they're taking or the expression on that person's face. And that's what you're doing in this strategy. You're going to describe to your reader what the character is saying, uh, what the character's voice sounds like, what their face looks like, and what actions they are taking in that scene. So for example, it might be through dialogue. Maybe the character says, I don't want to talk about this anymore. And then maybe they slam a door and we can tell from those actions that that character is clearly angry. I have an example of this to share with you. And this is a quote from The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. Please don't. Her voice was cold, but the rancor was gone from it. She looked at Gatsby. There, Jay, she said, but her hand as she tried to light a cigarette was trembling. Suddenly, she threw the cigarette and the burning match on the carpet. So in this quote, you can see that Fitzgerald doesn't tell us that this character is upset or nervous or sad, but he is able to show us the emotions of the character through this dialogue. She really isn't able to get a lot of words out and she also is trying to light a cigarette and her hand is trembling so much that she can't and she just throws it away. So from these little actions and from the dialogue, and he also tells us about the tone of her voice, we are able to deduce the emotional state of this character. The second strategy that you can use to powerfully describe emotion in writing is to describe what your characters are physically feeling. So a quick note with this strategy that you can only use it for your point of view character or if you have an omniscient narrator who is able to know what multiple characters are feeling in the story. But for example, if you were writing in the first person and your character was narrating the story, you would only be able to describe what that character is physically feeling because they wouldn't know what other people are physically feeling. Just like in real life, you don't know if someone has a headache, you can only know that if they tell you. So just keep that in mind when you use this strategy. But basically, when you use this strategy, you are describing for your readers what this character is feeling physically. So if the character is nervous, you might write that the character's mouth grows dry, or maybe their palms are sweaty, or again, maybe their head is throbbing or something like that. And these details really help your reader to experience that emotion that you are describing. So I have an example to share with you, a quote from the Pulitzer Prize winning novel, So Big by Edna Ferber. But once in the vast bed, she lay there utterly lost in the waves of terror and loneliness that envelop one at night in a strange house among strange people. 
She lay there, tensed and tight, her toes curled with nervousness, her spine hunched with it, her leg muscles taut. So notice in this quote that Ferber does use the word nervousness. So you can use words like angry and upset and sad, but you want to take them to the next level and add more description behind them so we can truly experience what your character is feeling. And when I use this strategy, if I'm writing fiction, I like to think about have I ever been in a situation that was similar to my characters and how did I react in that situation? So put yourself in the head of the character and really think about how you can communicate to the reader the feeling that your character is experiencing. The third strategy is to use similes and metaphors to describe your character's emotions. So with a simile, you use the words like or as to compare two things to each other, and with a metaphor, you don't. And I have two examples of this to share with you, and the first is an example of a simile from J.R.R. Tolkien's book, The Fellowship of the Ring. I am old, Gandalf. I don't look it, but I am beginning to feel it in my heart of hearts. Well preserved indeed. Why, I feel all thin, sort of stretched, if you know what I mean, like butter that has been scraped over too much bread. So in this quote, Tolkien is using a simile to describe how Bilbo is feeling, and it's just a really great way to add another level of imagery to your writing and help us to connect with the character on a deeper level because even though there's more going on in the story here because Bilbo is in possession of this magic ring, but we can all sort of connect with this character and say, I've also felt exhausted like this where I kind of know what Bilbo is saying and it makes the writing so much more memorable. Now, I also have an example of a metaphor to share with you, and this one is from Virginia Woolf's book, To the Lighthouse. They came to her, naturally, since she was a woman, all day long with this and that, one wanting this, another that. The children were growing up. She often felt she was nothing but a sponge, sopped full of human emotions. So in this passage, Wolf is using a metaphor to describe what the character is feeling. She was nothing but a sponge. And it's a really great image, and when I read it for the first time, I pictured somebody wringing out a sponge and the water going on their hands. So it just brings another level to this description and helps you connect and empathize with the character because you've probably been in a similar situation and felt a similar emotion and you're able to empathize with the character on a deeper level. So I hope that these three strategies help you first to describe what is happening in the scene, second to describe what your characters are physically feeling, and third to use a simile or metaphor to introduce an image that will really evoke the emotion on a deeper level. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and leave a comment below if you have another strategy that you use. And also follow me here on YouTube for more videos like this one. And I'll also leave a link to my email newsletter in the description box below so that you can subscribe to get more writing resources if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic week. God bless, and I wish you all the best with your writing projects.